with regards to the Prophet وسلم, cursing the Jews and the Christians because they took their graves or the graves of their righteous men and of their prophets as places of worship. Is the Prophet وسلم's holy masjid included in this? This is a great question. And there are many uh, great Muslims who came years before us who asked this question and dealt with this question. And there are two ways of dealing with it. There's a simple basic way and there is a detailed way. The simple basic way is that the Prophet Wasallam's sacred masjid is not included in this, period. One of the reasons is the Messenger of Allah's grave, his tomb, is not actually inside of the masjid. Nor is it something sought and looked after in the masjid. The musalla area is distinct from the Prophet's tomb. Let alone the fact that the Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he himself warned from the act. So regardless of what people did, he himself legislated, it's not to be done. Period. That's the law. Right? Last but not least, for argument's sake, some scholars say, even if that was the fact and that was the case, the Prophet's masjid is an exception to the rule because of the different hadith regarding going to it, praying in it. It's virtue. It's excellence. And it's a sacred place, beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which there are men whom Allah loves. That's in brief. As far as some of the details, then first and foremost is, um, the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, warned from it. Extremely, like we just said. So it's impossible for the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, to warn from it and to curse those who did it and then put it in his last will and testament for it to be done. Proving that it was not from his or by his approval at all. And it's also impossible for the Sahaba, those who are with him, his wives, Aisha, he died in Aisha's house, for her to approve of something like that. It was impossible. Those who were close to him, those who were on his deathbed when he was suffering from fever. And uh, some of the female companions, they mentioned a church that they saw in Ethiopia. How beautiful it was. The ch church was so beautiful when they made the migration to, to, to Ethiopia before Medina. And the Messenger of Allah says, Ulaiki shirau khalqa in Allah. These people are the worst of created beings who paint and make illuminations of saints and righteous people and prophets, etc. So it's impossible for them to oppose the Prophet's teachings. So obviously that leaves us with one last final uh, deduction or possible uh, sum. And that is the Messenger of Allah's house being included into his masjid was done years later. Without the approval of the Prophet nor of the Sahaba. And even when the Messenger of Allah's uh, household, all of his houses, the Hujurat, were included in the Prophet's masjid, it's still separated to this day. So the Prophet used to live right there where the masjid was. And the masjid now is nothing like the size of it back then. Parts of it, even maybe different places where you walk, that was the Prophet's house. But obviously everything was, it was over a thousand years ago. Okay? So things were included into the masjid that weren't normally what? From the masjid. Alright? That's first and foremost. So under any circumstance, did the Prophet allow it or encourage it? Under any circumstance, did the companions allow it or encourage it? Rather, many, many years went by, and in many different uh, aspects of uh, construction, remodeling, expansion, that caused the Messenger of Allah's houses, his hujurat, to be, and obviously he died in his house. And they did not make his grave into a public place, because out of fear that people would take it as a... So they kept it there, intimate and private, and then later on, the house was annexed or placed into the masjid building through expansion. Clear on that. Okay? And there are different decisions that were made um, historically. Some of them were right, and some of them were wrong. Some of them, the campaigns didn't agree with. We don't agree with you doing that, but that's how it got done. And even to this day, there have been um, several different uh, efforts made and placed by the Saudi government to prevent the Messenger of Allah's tomb to be of any place near the direction of the Qibla and any location in which a person has to pray and do anything which is Sunnah, Ibadah, in the Masjid. And once you go there, you'll see that. That you have to go out of your way. What? Hadahua, right? For argument's sake, this, that, Fulan, Fulan, this campaign was there, the Saudi government, for argument's sake, Quran and Sunnah. Bottom line. That's what we have. What this leader did, what this one did, I don't know. Not my business. I know the Quran and Sunnah. Clear on that? And the person, for argument's sake, for argument's sake, someone says, I won't go and pray there because the Prophet says, don't pray in a masjid in which there is a 
grave for argument's sake. And obviously visiting the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid in Medina is not mandatory. It's another part of the argument. Going to Mecca, that's mandatory. At least once in your life. Huh? Wallahu alam. That's in brief. Well, yeah, and of course, different people who have graves in their masjids, whether it be in India or Turkey or wherever else you are, whatever, yani, they use that as an argument. And unfortunately, that's a feeble argument. You have the graves in the middle of the masjid. You have people paying money. You have a mausoleum in the middle of the musallah, people with candles. Right? Versus, I mean, it's, it's a huge difference, right? And I remember the first time when I went to Medina, it's shocking when you see it. Well, life is shocking. When you see the qibla is this way, the grave is that way, and you'll literally see someone turn away from the qibla, literally, literally, and make dua towards the grave. Or you see people take pieces of paper and they'll try to throw it. Or it's all types of crazy stuff. Well, when you see it, it's not like reading in a book. Okay? Ibn Abdul Hab, right? Propaganda. When you actually see the fitna and the attachment that people have to graves. It's unreal, literally. And it makes you appreciate and respect books like Kitab al Tawheed even more because you see it with your own, your own tools. And that's Medina. Let alone you go to other Arab countries, North African countries, and you see it. People sitting there with a candle, camping out in front of this this dariq, this, this shrine, this meshed, literally. Giving more devotion, more respect to the mausoleum than other places that are clearly proven to be sacred in Islam. That's a reality, right? Lomastan.